Maybe you've already gotten the COVID vaccine, or maybe you know someone who has, but maybe you're also skeptical about the vaccine or have concerns about it. We've heard lots of different viewpoints on vaccines, so we spoke with Primera Blue Cross's Dr. Stephen Jacobson and clinical pharmacist Emily Show for insight. There's actually three vaccines currently on the market, and they're all good vaccines by Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Um, the Pfizer Moderna vaccines work with what's called, called a messenger RNA system. In other words, there's a little particle that is uh, injected into our body. Our cells take it up, and they actually make a protein that mimics the COVID-19 protein, and then we make antibodies to that. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine works very similarly, although using a, a different type of a virus vector to bring it into the body. It is important to remind people, though, that there's no actual live COVID-19 virus in these vaccines, right? That's correct. These cannot give you the COVID-19 virus. It just uh, causes our bodies to make this protein portion, and then we develop the antibody response to those. What do we know, though, about any possible allergic reactions or side effects of the vaccine? I've talked to a couple people who have gotten the vaccine and felt sick for a day, but that was it. So that is a common reaction that there might be some soreness at the vaccine site or people might feel a little bit chilled or feverish as part of the, the vaccine response. Tend to look at it as a good thing. That means your body, his immune system is kicking in and it's developing a, a robust immune response. So those are common side effects that people have, but they go away pretty quickly, you know, typically within even a few hours to a day or two at the most, typically. I know that it's important for all of us to get the vaccine, to develop this herd immunity we all hear about, but isn't it true that there are some people who can't or shouldn't get the vaccine, right? Yeah, that's probably a very small number. So the, the one that I hear most frequently would be people who've had a severe allergic response to other types of vaccines, and it would probably be best for them not to get this vaccine. But for most other folks, you know, if you have a concern, speak with your primary care physician or in some cases, people with immune disorders that might be seeing an immunologist or a rheumatologist to speak to your specialist and get their thoughts on whether the vaccine's appropriate for you. That's a really important point you make. And, and I know some people, if you're sick, you're not supposed to get the flu shot, right? Should I get a COVID test prior to getting the COVID vaccine? You do not need to have a COVID test prior to getting the vaccine. Uh, as long as you're feeling okay, that's fine. If you're having uh, symptoms of COVID, the ones that we've all heard about, the recommendation is to wait at least 10 days from your onset of symptoms and actually stay in quarantine. So we wouldn't want to be going out and getting a vaccine anyway. Once you're feeling better, your symptoms have resolved, it's at least 10 days uh, from uh, onset of symptoms, then it's perfectly fine to go ahead and, and get the vaccine. All right, I'm going to put my grandma on blast here, if that's okay. So <laughs> she believes that she has the COVID antibodies. She has the coronavirus antibodies, although she has not been tested for them. So therefore, she believes she doesn't need the vaccine. So the question is, do people who have COVID antibodies and have been tested positive for them, do they need the vaccine? <laughs> Yeah, we would recommend that you still get the vaccine. And the reason for that is even though you can develop a good immunity from having the having been infected with the with COVID-19, but it appears that the um, longevity of the uh, immune response probably isn't as long or probably as strong as when you get the vaccine. So the vaccine actually causes our bodies to make a better immune response than the natural virus does. That is good to know. Will you call my grandma? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, the supply of Washington vaccines is increasing. What is ahead for the next phases of distribution? So right now, Washington State is in what they call phase 1B tier 2. So it's now open to including high-risk critical workers and congregate settings, people 16 years or older who may be pregnant or have a disability that puts them at high risk for this uh, severe disease. So overall, the vaccine is really opening up to a wider range of people. And as we go through different phases uh, further along, more and more people will have the opportunity to be vaccinated. Should we be checking with our primary doctor about when we're eligible? There's some very nice tools out there uh, available. So there's a findyourphasewa.org that's okay. sponsored by the state of Washington. I took that myself just the other day. It's quite easy to do. And so I encourage you to use that, the, the face finder tool. 
That's great to know. Find your phase of law.org. I'm doing that as soon as we're done with this interview. <laughs> now, early on, there were calls for trained medical professionals to help administer the vaccines. Emily, you volunteered at a clinic. Can you tell us your experience as well as maybe some volunteers for non-medical medical support related to the COVID vaccines? So I volunteered with uh, the Swedish um, Seattle University Clinic last month. Overall, it's just been a tremendous effort by volunteers, by organizations within our community to provide vaccines to as many people as possible. There's opportunities for non-medical folks to participate and, and contribute to the cause. There's a, a lot of opportunity for um, medically trained folks as well. If uh, There are still plenty of volunteer spots open in, in numerous different settings across um, the Washington area. If you are interested in volunteering, there are a number of different places that your help could be tremendously beneficial to many people. Big thanks to Dr. Jacobson and Emily Shaw for sharing their experience with us and their information. Meantime, if you want to learn more about the COVID-19 vaccine and any other medical issues, please visit Primera.com or visit the link on New Day's website. Well, right now, one in three Americans will likely develop type 2 diabetes at some point. Now, up next, we're talking with Longevity Medical about what you can do to reverse that diagnosis. We'll be right back. The preceding portion of New Day Northwest was sponsored by Primera Blue Cross.